So, all right, Sammy has. <laughs> Why did the video start like that? What's happening? All right, this is a naked Jakey video about ads and video games, and I'm terrified. You're right, the internet is a horror game. Christ. Advertisements, AKA ads, AKA that thing you see everywhere all of the time. No matter where you go, and no matter what God. you do, ads can and will find you, Brian. Stop, that stop, stop, stop. I'm I'm fucking on edge right now. Mr. Nakey, I need you to lower your fucking voice because I'm feeling Oh, oh my god. There's a certainty in life along with death and taxes and that thing when the waiter says enjoy your food and you say I love you too senpai. In video games, the beautiful magical world of escapism and wonder that is video game, sadly it, no exception. Video games have been tainted with the foul odor and slimy snail trail of product placement and advertising for many a fortnight, pun intended, son unfriended. But is all advertising in video games bad? Are some ads- Oh my god. Fortnite is one big ad. I never even thought about that, and we ate that shit up. Left no crumbs. Fortnite was like, here's an ad, but enjoy it. Fortnite was one of those, Fortnite was the ad where it's like, it, it like kind of makes you play the game while you wait for the ad to pass. Then you kind of start playing it, and then you forget that it's been 30 seconds and you can exit out of it already. It's for good and not just greed. How did we get here? And where the hell are we going, Brian? Dude, you're driving, just a hand me your phone. Multitasking is not one of your starting attributes, Brian. The year is 1978 AD. Advertising. Scott Adams releases Adventureland, a text-based game with no graphics and even worse, no kill streaks. And yet, Adventureland holds one of the earliest examples of in-game advertising, an ad for Scott's next upcoming even sexier game, Pirate Adventure. Ooh, shiver me timbers. <laughs> Look out, Sea of Thieves. It's got to be like, yo, Microsoft Sea of Thieves nuts can fit in your mouth. I'm Mr. Nagy, please. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so it's the 80s and product placement is already- I just stream on a ball? But also- I kind of was thinking that. I feel like it's impossible to watch this video and not at some point think I want to sit on a ball. Because he's making it look kind of fun. You think it's good for your posture or am I just going to sit like a fucking shrimp on a ball too? That's kind of what I'm doing right now. Look at it. I'll just turn to the side. I'm just going to turn to the side. I want, uh, this is me not changing my posture at all. I'm just going to turn. Mm. I would say Notre Dame called. You think I'd be taller? You think I'd actually be five foot two if I didn't sit like that? I guess we'll never know. PP is starting to show up in the world of video PP. games as well, primarily in the form of the advert game, which is exactly what it sounds like a video game built solely around advertising. A okay. Um, I'm pissed off because you know what I noticed? So I got on the fucking Starbucks the other day. All right, I got on my little Starbucks app to pay for my little Starbucks fucking hit of serotonin. And they have a thing right now that's like a Starbucks game where you're like a little mouse. All right, and you run and like jump over like random like holiday shit. And then you like collect coffee cups and then you get um points. And then if you get enough points, then you can tap this thing and a snow globe shakes. And then if you get a three in a category, you like, you can get like a gift card. <sighs> As I'm explaining this out loud, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel good. But in that moment when I was, when I was showing them my app, okay, here, yeah, I'll scan for points. And then I was like, ooh, the mouse jumping game. Yeah, they got me. They did. And I was like, I'm a gamer. Nobody else is going to get a high score like I can. Single product or company. One of the first advert games is in 1983 with Tapper prominently featuring Budweiser and sold to be played in bars. But nobody really gives a shit about the product placement because 
they're drunk, but also the game is just really fun. So fun that a year later the game was rebranded as Root Beer Tapper and sold in regular arcades for children too. So now all the kids are like, hey bud, why'd you put this in W, man? I'm shit hammer. Now the big video game crash of 1983 would slow things down for a bit, but the late 80s and 90s saw a huge resurgence of advert games. Talking about Donald Land over in Japan in 1988, because over there, Donald. Ronald McDonald is often known as Donald McDonald, which did you guys know that? <laughs> I am just, I, I am, I am. Donald just, McDonald. I, am, I love I that. Am, I am just, <laughs> I am just enamored by that. Capcom publishes. <laughs> In 1990, who, while not as immediately recognizable as our beloved Don Bon Dovi over here, Noid was once the iconic mascot of none other than Domino's Pizza. Fun fact about Yo Noid is that it's actually just a reskin of this Japanese game that I will let my anime fans help me pronounce. That's about a ninja boy who rescues children who have- Domino's had a strange human man bunny costume mascot? Is that true? Y'all remember that? Anybody remember that? I don't think I don't know about that. I think Domino's ditched that and went with the Domino. No? Yes? I still have a creepy for How many? Wait, what? How did you know like a, oh please. I didn't know that. I didn't know that you guys knew that. What the fuck, I'm kind of flipping out. Have been kidnapped. Now, I don't know about y'all, but when I get kidnapped, first thing I do is order Domino's Pizza. Cool Spot drops in 1993, and honestly, for a game where its entire lore and existence is solely based on the red spot on the 7-Up logo, <laughs> whoa, the game gets pretty good reviews and people actually kind of like it. There's a closet behind me in this apartment, and I almost just fully fell into it. Chex Quest drops in 19... A game based on the 7-Up dot? I never played this! How do you fuckers know about this? 1996 bundled with certain boxes of Czech cereal and is clearly just a non-violent reskin of Doom, which is kind of genius. But, disclaimer, if you have a phobia of rice, corn, or wheat, this game may as well be Doom. What the fuck, Brian? I'm going free! Why did you make me play the wheat level, Brian? You're a toad! You've always been a toad, and you're gonna die a toad, Brian. Pepsi Man drops in 1999. Your beloved Pepsi man. I know only in Japan, unfortunately. Shout out Donald and Poland. I'm I couldn't even begin to tell you what Pepsi Man is advertising. You know, I'm looking around this whole screen and I am just lost. There are so many of these advert games that I'm sure some of you remember that just kept going and going into the early 2000s. Kind of goes without saying, but obviously these companies are dropping advert games to try and boost sales of their product, right? The question is, is it actually working? The answer, much like my vision through these shitty glasses, is a little unclear, but it seems to be kind of a case-by-case -case type deal. Chex claims that Chex Quest boosted their sales by 295% at the time, which kind of makes- I have a question. Did you ever consume the product that the game was for while playing the game? Like, would you be like, oh, time to drink my Beppis and Beppis man. Like, did you ever be like, I'm gonna eat a bowl of Chex Mix while I play Chex Man? Blatant advergate. Okay. What if you We're sneak back. your PP into like an actual legit fully priced real video game? Well, that started happening like a lot in the 90s and 2000s. Sports games are a huge one with games like Madden, FIFA, 1080, and Tony Hawk all having relevant product placement to each kind of sport. Same with racing games like Need for Speed or Gran Turismo showcasing real car brands and real car parts. Same with Croc 2 advertising fucking little guys. I should have just said Crocs. It would have been way better if Aww, I just said Crocs. Little Damn guys. It, Stick to the scrap. So far, all of my non advert game examples have been pretty tame and there's actually a solid argument that that product placement could actually add to the immersion of that type of game. But then it starts to get a little trickier. Crazy Taxi drops in 1999 and is one of the first blatant examples of product. Is that like a metaverse thing? Like because there's ads in real life and they're like, yeah, let's just mimic it in the video games and the da 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 You know what I'm saying? Placement Shit. in a non-adver game, non-sports, non-racing game, but 
the immersion argument is still potentially there. Yeah, brands like Pizza Hut and KFC pop up in this game a lot, but also, if you were a taxi driver, you would probably see brands like KFC or Pizza Hut. Like, as a passenger, it's kind of hilarious to imagine getting into a cab just to go to a Pizza Hut by yourself, like, just get the pizza delivered, but you get the point. Crazy Taxi marks a point in time, I think, where the immersion argument behind product placement in video games really only does get trickier and trickier. I'm just gonna run through some examples real quick and you let me know what you think down in the comments, gamers. Make sure to ring that bell and be notified once a year. In Sonic Adventure 2, Sonic once shoes a year? are officially soap branded shoes. You know, like the shoes that you put on, you can like slide down rails and get all soapy and shit. Hi, go off, that's kind of hard fucking shadow, got the foams on. In Enter the Matrix, apparently the only beverage that exists in this universe is Powerade. Maybe because it comes in green and can just kind of fit the whole mm. matrixy vibe. It has a vibe. A spacey vibe. No Chaos Theory, a game all about remaining undetected and slinking around in the shadows. Ooh, you know what would really help you? Why did he clap and I... Bro. ...to remain undetected is if you just f***ing reek the max body spray and airwaves gum and your Nokia phone was like... <laughs> The most iconic ringtone ever made. Dementia kicking in. God damn it. Why are you so jumpy? It's just, I, I don't know. I am just a jumpy motherfucker. The game is notable because it was one of the first to utilize dynamic advertising, meaning that it uses the internet to change what ads you see in game depending on your time of day and region. Ubisoft was one of the first to do this type of chicanery, but definitely Whoa. not the last. Thanks, Ubisoft. I love you. Please don't hurt my family. Please. It was Brian. Brian did it. And surprise, surprise. Guess what other companies started doing this in the 2000s as well? EA? No. Not our EA! Couldn't be precious EA! Madden, Need for Speed, even the skate games got in on there with different dynamic ads appearing on like billboards and buses and shit. But my favorite example by far is in Burnout Paradise where in 2008 they ran political ads for Obama. Hey kids, when you're not too busy t-boning your fellow Americans and chewing your mouth for hours, <laughs> I didn't know me, that. <laughs> now going back to that whole oh, but does it add to the immersion debate, that conversation really only does get trickier and trickier as gaming grows bigger and bigger. Like the f***ing king himself on the front of the box, that's one thing. Like, you know what you're getting into if you buy that. But when the king shows up in your $60 game that you just purchased with your hard-earned paycheck, that hits a little bit different. I'm not saying it's always necessarily bad. Like, it could be funny or whatever, but it is different. Like, when I skip school to drop $60 on Uncharted 3, and I boot up the multiplayer just to be assaulted by the smell of Subway bread reeking up my home, you know exactly what I'm talking about. That Subway bread has a very specific f***ing tang to it. Like, it's, like it's pH balance is all f <laughs> Alan Wake is a better example for us to discuss as far as the immersion shit goes, okay? It's a single player, offline, Remedy made game, okay? I love Remedy. Max Payne is like my favorite game ever. Now, hey, Max in Payne, there's in the chat. brands like Energizer and Verizon show up in your realistically portrayed world is potentially fine, especially when a main mechanic of the game is using batteries for your flashlight. But when these very specific ads repeat themselves over and over, and you get a f***ing achievement for sitting down and watching an entire ad on a fake TV in a fake universe. Alan, wake the f up. We're going back to GameStop. We're returning this game and we're buying Yahtzee. I don't give a shit. Anymore. We're getting Yahtzee for the 360. I think an argument for immersive PP with more solid ground is the Yakuza series. Now, I've never played these games, but based on what I've watched and read, they seem to incorporate a wide variety of Japanese brands in a much more subtle and potentially world building way. And I'm not trying to get preachy and say you should feel one way or the other about this. I'm just saying, I think if you're going to argue for immersion, there's more of a substantial argument to be made with this game series. Versus Kojima just straight up putting brands like Doritos and Mountain Dew and Axe Body Spray into the Japanese version of Peace Walk. With his reasoning being to keep things fresh and to surprise players. Like, okay, dude, how about you focus on surprising us with another two-dimensional character with... Yeah, one of those definitely rubs you different, differently than the other. ...and boobs that breathe through her skin and not a f***ing ad 
for Ride with Norman Reedus Sundays in a game where I'm supposed to be taking Mr. Reedus seriously as Sam Porter Bridges. Get it? His last name is Bridges because he's going to bridge together the f***ing U.S. I don't mean to just roast Kojima, okay? I own every game. I have art books. I have a huge crush on Sniper Wolf. Not that one. The one with the polygonal setup. But come on, if you even think about going in the comments and arguing that the inclusion of Monster Energy or Ride with Norman Reedus Sundays adds to the immersion of this universe or is a fourth wall breaking move from an auteur you just don't understand alan wake the f up the patriots are behind all of this the lolly 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 but you want to know what really changed advertising in video games mobile game i cannot imagine what that sound that i just let out of my face sounded like to all my neighbors who are not participating in this at all and have no idea what i'm doing they're like, what kind of bird was that? That shit done went and changed the entire fucking galaxy. Because I will off the parks. Because if you release a free to play game and you run ads on it and that game does even a little bit well, you could potentially make a lot of money. The Flappy Bird guy claimed he was making up to 50K a day when that game was blowing up. And then he hated his life from all the mean messages and attention he got, which is really sad. And a lot of the time, the ads in these free mobile games are just for other mobile games that 90% of the time don't even f***ing exist or are just like really weird or like really sexual. Like an off-brand ass Costco render of SpongeBob, like on an island with like Peter Griffin and there's some shitty text-to-speech that's like, Grandma got away with it again. No one can get past level five without coming. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, my that's god a, that's a different type of game we all know what we all know what type of game i'm talking about Fuckin'. make sure to choose your color of cum and then surprise surprise the free-to-play model makes its way over to consoles with games like fortnite constantly having different promotions or events like the trailer Fortnite is the most mobile game PC game that's ever. For Tenet or an Ariana Grande concert. And a lot of that stuff is actually pretty cool and like well integrated. And because the game is free, nobody really cares that much. Like credit where it's due to Fortnite, everybody kind of wins. Actually, it's free, but with that advertising, not only do they get you to look at the advertising, they get you to pay out the ass for it. They get you to pay for every skin, all the cosmetics, this pack, that pack, blah, blah, blah. I cringe thinking about how much money I spent on Fortnite. You know your favorite companies, you know your best friends? Well, they started incorporating those same business like practices and the favorite <laughs> in-game microtransactions and advertising in not so free video games, AKA $60 fully priced video games. Like at one point, NBA 2K and UFC 4 had straight up mid-roll ads that played during downtime or even interrupted gameplay. You know, like a mobile game does with the Peter Griffin. No way, situation. I'd be so mad. Also 2K assaults you with microtransactions like every five seconds. So maybe just don't play that game. Just go play basketball outside. Like, yeah. Yeah! And unlike the subtle <laughs> plug that Scott Sorry. Adams did back in 1978, modern games love to I relate to that. that their hot, sexy new game is out too, and you should really go out and buy that one. But when that adds even one step or loading screen between me and getting to play the game that I actually want to play, my patience runs out faster than Brian on track and field day. And let me tell you, that kid is dumb as hell, but he is quick. Earlier this year, Sony and Microsoft both announced that they're streamlining the process of integrating ads in free-to-play games on their respective marketplaces, okay. similar to how ads are integrated in your games on your iPhone through the App Store. Now, in an absolute best-case scenario of how these ads get implemented, hardworking game devs getting more money for the blood, sweat, and fears they dump into their indie game or whatever while ads are subtly placed on billboards or benches or used in like a immersive world building way like the yakuza series that's fine in theory but after going over everything i've gone through i think we all know that's probably not how it's gonna shake out and not to be a depressing dare Fair. but if history repeats itself all signs point towards AAA companies slowly inserting more and more ads in their paid AAA games too, because again, look at how they much fucking money ads make on mobile games. You seriously think those AAA bigwig execs aren't noticing that shit? Have you heard the way these lizard people talk? They already tried doing
doing it with those sports games. It's just like microtransactions. Years ago, nobody thought they would ever put that shit in a fully priced $60 or I guess now $70 paid game like Gran Turismo 7, but money talks. And unfortunately, mm. Activision Blizzard and EA and all these companies learned to speak money on Duolingo because in 2021, Activision Blizzard made over $5 billion on microtransactions <sighs> alone. Billions with a B and an I and a T for Ted. And just like with microtransactions, Reactions. Gamers are gonna push back and I, I I paused because I was gonna say something, but I think I just have to let out a plane. But at the end of the day, a lot of you, mostly children probably, which is really unfortunate that children are frequently the ones preyed upon with this shit. A lot of us stupid gamers are still gonna buy the fucking thing because the day I can't live out my Steph Curry power fantasy is the day I alley you bought this moral coin. So help me God. So yeah, that's where we're at now. Not to end this video on a depressing note, but I guess my only real message that you should maybe take away from this is don't pre-order games. Just don't. I've done it. You've done it. We've all wanted to play that game the second it comes out. But honestly, just wait, wait even an hour to see if A, the game even runs properly like it was advertised to or b doesn't have a bunch of shitty business practices implemented that completely ruin the experience people wow. should be paid for their incredibly hard work 100 percent but also as a consumer when you buy something you should know what you're paying for right like when you watch a video for free on youtube it would probably make sense for that person to run an ad on that video to make them some money so they could buy cool stuff like a jet ski right like you would want but no that is that is kind of true though where it's like if you're already paying for it up front and also that's a good point of they don't really show you what the advertising style is gonna be like within the video game i never even thought about that when you pre-order what if we had pre-ordered scarlet and violet i pre-ordered that and what if there was like ads if there was a mid-game ad in pokemon i would snap my switch over my head jet ski even though they oh yeah the city, he was talking about his ads couldn't afford or fit a jet ski and maintain that jet ski right you would want that right okay Happy we could get on the same page, Brian. I, you would I want that, that, right? Thanks again to Opera GX for sponsoring this video. And Jakey Jakey and Jakey Attorneys, Attorneys at, at Law. Law. Thanks you for watching this video. Godspeed and a good night and Godspeed. Linda, please call me using your cell phone. I really want to talk to the kids. The horror genre is such a natural fit for video games to the point where it's kind of. Oh, man.